for around the past week, I have been creating my own constructed language with the ultimate goal of having an easy and most importantly, functional language. Now making a language is a pretty daunting task, so I may not include a second part to the series. However, if you would like to see a second part where I build on the language, make sure to leave your suggestions in the comments and I might just add them. For the name of the conlang, I decided on lingua valce, meaning the valce language. My language is pretty Eurocentric, and that is a mindful choice to keep things more familiar. First, I decided on all my language sounds, so here they are. I'll skip past what this means, because I don't want to bore you, and I hardly understand half the stuff anyways. A better way to show this information would be just to list my letters and the sounds they make. My language has five vowels, A, E, I, O, and U, and 24 consonants. My vowels are not fully phonetic and can change pronunciation based off context, but are generally pronounced A, E, E, O, and U. The pronunciations of the consonants are much more specific than the vowels, and here they are. B, K, Ch, D, Th, F, G, J, H, H, Y, K, L, M, N, P, R, S, Sh, T, V, W, Z, Z. Also, I have included a diaresis to indicate that two vowels are pronounced separately, either with or without a glottal stop, rather than as a diphthong, similar to its function in French. Compare Noël to Noël. The diaresis will always go on the second vowel. And now we are off to actual grammar. Here are all the pronouns in my language. I have included four person markers and a distinction for plural, making a total of eight nominative pronouns. In case you don't understand person markers, I'll give a rundown. First person refers to the speaker of the sentence, think I or me. Second person refers to the audience of the sentence, think you. Third person refers to another party that is mentioned previously, like the word it. Now on top of those three pronouns, I've also specified two types of third person pronouns. Animate pronouns refer to animals or people. Unlike English, gender is not specified and therefore takes the place of the words him or her. Inanimate nouns refer to inanimate objects, and can be translated to it. If you're referring to a mix of animate and inanimate nouns, use the inanimate pronoun. And on top of that, there are, of course, plural nouns. The pronouns on screen are nominative, which means they act as the subject of the sentence. If the pronoun acts in a different way, it needs to take a different case. There are four versions of the objective case in my language. In English, the objective case is used if either the pronoun acts as the direct object, acts as the indirect object, or acts as the object of the preposition. In my language, each of these gains its own case. Accusative pronouns, those that act as direct objects, will end in in. Dative pronouns, those that act as indirect objects, will end in r. And ablative pronouns, those that act as objects of the preposition, will end in c. Emphatic pronouns are a general miscellaneous category that is mainly used as a stand-in for the vocative case, which is when you reference a person before you talk to them. I've also included possessive adjectives and objects, like the words my and mind in English. The former being an adjective and the latter being an object. Don't worry, it gets easier from here. I have some pretty complicated pronouns, but both articles and verb conjugation are pretty simple. Here are the definite articles in my language, similar to the word the in English. There are six of them. Nominative articles use the, accusative and dative articles use the, and emphatic and ablative articles use though. Plural articles are formed by simply adding an s to the end. One more thing, plural nouns tend to end in s, although you can leave off the s from the noun if it has an article attached. For example, the word buros, meaning offices or desks, could be written as vos buro. Now we are onto verbs, which only have three forms, making them very easy to conjugate. The first form is obviously the infinitive, which usually ends in er, but can also end in any vowel plus r. To conjugate a verb, it depends on whether the subject is singular or plural. For singular subjects, simply drop the er, and for plural subjects, drop the er and add s. Here are the most common verbs, and notice some of these have exceptions that I have underlined. So now we have the most basic parts of the sentence, which means we can start to form some sentences. Migea ata do magishin.
he have hexipomage. Vifush Sikaler. Thank you for watching. Just to let you know, this video took a long time to plan, record, and edit. So if you subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated, because only 8% of watch time on my videos come from subscribed viewers. Also, comment below what grammatical concepts or vocabulary you would like to see in a second part. Additionally, I plan to make more videos about linguistics in the future, so stick around.